All right. So um, now we have looked into the abdominal cavity. We've made some simple cuts here. And you can see some obvious structures. This is the liver. And the liver has a lot of different lobes to it. And if you pull apart some lobes, you'll be able to see the gallbladder. And I'm kind of pushing apart these two parts, the liver, and then you can see this little sac-like structure there. And that's the gallbladder. We are pretty close to the diaphragm. You can see the diaphragm here and here. Um, and then you see where there's the the diaphragm here and here's the liver and then there's this thin mesentery bit of mesentery in between there and that's the falciform ligament and I'll be pointing out other mesenteries as we go along that's one that is sometimes tough to see it can sometimes break as we look at these cats, but um, here on this fresh cat, there's a nice falciform ligament. All right, and then if you look under the liver here, here's the stomach. Hmm. And the stomach has this J shape to it, kind of arches around, and then it pinches together, and then it goes to the beginning of the small intestine. Now before I go into much of the digestive system, let me point out this other large mesentery here. And this covers up the small intestines. It's not attached at the bottom, but it is attached to the top. It's at attached to the stomach. This is called the greater omentum. It also has a nickname, the fatty apron. And that's because it is a bit fatty and it's where some would have an apron. And so that's why it's called that. Um, one thing I'll point out here before I uh, lift the greater momentum up is this structure here. This is the spleen. This spleen is a bit pink. It, it looks like it had the injection go onto the surface of the spleen. Not every spleen will look like this. Sometimes they'll just be plain gray. So I'm lifting up the greater omentum. Now the greater omentum is attached to this big, large curving edge of the stomach and it's called the greater curvature. And so this greater omentum is hanging off of the greater curvature of the stomach. It's just kind of like a curtain. Uh, just attached there. Now, you, I can point out another mesentery, and see that I'm stretching this area. Now I'm below the liver, but above the stomach, and there's this little mesentery here, and that's the lesser omentum. So we had greater omentum here, lesser omentum. And I'll point out another mesentery. It's the last of the ones that we're responsible for. And it's, it's this. If you pull apart the small intestine and just kind of spread it out, you see all of this clear mesentery. And um, it's just called mesentery um, or mesentery proper. Um, so here we are again taking a look at the digestive system of a cat and here we're looking at the stomach and it has this um, these different regions to it. Um, I introduce you to the greater curvature. This is the lesser curvature. It's just um, it's very near that lesser omentum and um, so um, there's not as much of a curve to it, so it's that lesser curvature. Then there's this big kind of top part of it, um, <clears throat> which rises up 
uh, higher than the other parts of the stomach, and this is called the fundus of the stomach. And then as you get to the more narrow portion of the stomach before it joins in with the small intestine here, you get the pyloric region of the stomach. So this is the pyloric region of the stomach. And you can feel more than you can see where that valve is. There's a pyloric valve and I can feel it here, but we can do a dissection to try to take a look at it. But um, looking at the regions of the GI tract, this portion right here is the duodenum. I'm gonna lift this up. Now, the duodenum, it's also called duodenum. So say it the way you ever want to say it, I don't care. Uh, so duodenum here, and the duodenum is, in, is in, in association with a gland. This is the pancreas here. So I'm gonna lift this up again. So we have the pancreas here, and then it also comes out here, and it kind of points toward the spleen. You can see a little bit of spleen here, and then there's this tip end of the pancreas, and then it's all here. So pancreas. And there's this part of the pancreas that runs right next to the duodenum. And the pancreas dumps um, its enzymes into, and other secretions into the duodenum. Now another thing that, uh, that is an association with the duodenum is the gallbladder, and I'll try to show that to you again. So this is it, kind of tucked in um, between these lobes of the liver, and it has a bile duct that will um, empty into the beginning of the duodenum, and um, we'll di dissect that so you can see it better uh, later on in the video. And let's move Further along the GI tract, we've got this duodenum again. And then it starts to come into this portion of the uh, small intestine where it's just all zigzaggy. And anatomically, you really can't tell the difference between these last two regions of the small intestine. There's the jejunum and then there's ileum. Um, jejunum makes up quite a lot of the length of the small intestine. The, du the duodenum is the, the least amount of distance. This, um, But then there's uh, pretty much even amounts of jejunum and ileum. The ileum is the last region of the small intestine. The differences are histological, so you really can't tell anatomically where the, these differences are, but you can find the last part of the small intestine, and, and that is here. And you can tell because it's joining in with this large intestine. And here's the large intestine, the colon, it kind of sweeps around and goes down and goes um, in, down into the pelvis. And let me tell you parts of the colon, but we'll start backwards. So we can't see the rectum. That's down in the pelvic cavity, but um, you can see this descending colon. This one is a bit pink. And then you can see it comes over here. That's transverse colon. And then you can see that it goes down a little bit. And then that's ascending, because really things are traveling this way. So ascending, transverse, descending. And then just near where this ascending colon is, you can find this little pocket, this little thing. It is very small in a cat. It is larger in mammals that are more herbivorous, but cats are very carnivorous. This is the cecum this little thing. And humans, we have a cecum, but we also have an appendix, a little tiny thing 
that comes off of that, and we don't see that on a cat. There is a valve that is located just here where the ileum meets the colon. It's called the ileocolic valve, or sometimes it's called the ileocecal valve. And um, we'll dissect here in the colon in order to be able to see it. Okay, and so I just want to be able to tell you how to do this dissection in order to see the ileocolic valve. You need to be at the colon, here with the ascending colon, here's the cecum, you find the ileum, and then you want to make a cut that's in the ascending colon that's just opposite of where the ileum is coming in. And so one thing you need to do is there, there might be some poop in here, and so you want to push that down. And so you just kind of push the poop like, um, like toothpaste, not very good toothpaste. You kind of push that down so it's sort of more flat, and then you'll make a cut. And so you make a cut. Well, I guess I'll do it with scissors. You could use a scalpel for this and um, just make it a little bit opposite just along the wall here so that when you um, pull it apart and look inside that you can see that Ta -da! so that is the um, <clears throat> whoops this um, so that you can actually see that valve you can see that little um, sphincter that's right there. So that's the iliocolic valve.